Welcome to the Ontario Science Centre. And right now we are in the area which is dedicated to science news. So it's a fitting location for today's event. Canadian astronaut Robert Thirsk has been living in space for five months now. This is the longest period that any Canadian has ever spent in space. And today, we're actually going to have the chance to talk to him live right here at the Ontario Science Centre. We're also going to have the chance to talk with Dr. Richard Hewson, a Canadian scientist who's collaborating with Dr. Thirst. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Hooley McLaughlin, Director of Visitor Experience here at the Science Centre. Dr. Thirsk is participating in seven experiments while on this mission. One of them is called the CCISS, or Cardiovascular and Cerebrovascular Control on Return from the International Space Station, which I'll let Dr. Richard Houston explain to you further, as this is his experiment. Briefly, though, this experiment examines what happens to the cardiovascular system and blood flow when astronauts spend extended time in a state of weightlessness. It is hoped that some of the findings could be applied to older adults who suffer from heart disease caused by a sedentary lifestyle. And this is especially timely for us now because just a couple of weeks ago, Body Worlds and the Story of the Heart opened at the Science Center. Um, the experiment CESA started eight years ago, and Bob is now our, our seventh astronaut. He will be our final astronaut as part of this experiment. Seven year, eight years ago when we started the experiment, we understood that when astronauts came back from the space station after long durations, they were really likely to faint when they came back because when you go into space, gravity is taken away, your body gets lazy, it doesn't know how to operate anymore in terms of trying to pump blood up to the brain where you have to have it, okay? So, when they come back, they get, go back to an upright posture, they get dizzy, they faint. So CSIS went in there to try to understand what was going on. So we do a really detailed experiment on the cardiovascular system before and after flight. We look at the veins, how they bring blood back to the heart. We look at the heart and its function. We look at the arteries, how well they can constrict. And we look at how you get blood flow up to the brain because without that brain blood flow, no oxygen, you get dizzy, you faint, you fall, you crack a uh, hip if you're an older person. You know, so there really are earth-based applications to all this as well as to keeping our astronauts healthy. What we're seeing so far with our astronauts is that they are in fact really healthy. And you'll be able to hear from Bob how important exercise is to him while he's up there. He's able to fit into a two hour block every day. He can run on a treadmill, cycle on a, an ergometer, or he can get on this weight machine. He can do lots of exercise and really keep his body as healthy as possible while he's up there. And that's made a huge difference, we believe, in how the astronauts are coming back to Earth. And they're really healthy when they come back. At least the ones, you know, the six we've tested so far, and Bob's number seven. And, you know, so that has a, such an important message for us here on Earth. Because space is really the ultimate sedentary lifestyle. If you want to get around up there, you just push off the wall and you float. If you want to lift up this really heavy desk over here, you just put your finger up underneath it and you push it up and it floats away on you. So on, in space, you don't have to work against gravity. And unfortunately, many of us here on Earth have gotten rid of that idea of working too much against gravity and we have those really sedentary lifestyles. Exercise uh, every day is, is important. You know, I was um, watching a podcast of uh, the national news uh, just earlier today, from a couple days ago, it mentioned that uh, one out of five young people uh, are at risk of high blood pressure, of um, obesity, and of high cholesterol. That's a very sad statistic for Canada. And uh, up here we've been exercising regularly, and I wish that uh, Canadians, including young people, would get away from their computers, would uh, get away from the television sets, and get outside, outside and exercise. Exercising every day uh, for 20 minutes is uh, all that's required to maintain uh, uh, blood pressure when you're a young person. So uh, the exercise that we do up here provides benefits to astronauts. Uh, exercise on Earth is something that uh, we all need to make a lifelong commitment to. You know, it's probably true to say that every single organ system in the body is affected to a larger or small extent by weightlessness. That makes perfect sense. There are some organ systems in the body that uh, are more affected than others. So when I come back home, I expect um, 
that it'll be difficult for the first two or three days because of the changes in my vestibular apparatus and my balance and orientation mechanism in the base of my, my brain. I will experience that dizziness. I'll have trouble maintaining an upright posture when my uh, eyes are, are closed. Uh, from a cardiovascular point of view, my heart may have gotten weaker. Uh, the muscle, the heart muscle may have uh, diminished in, in size. The heart may not be able to pump uh, as effectively as it did before flight. So also for that reason, I'll feel uh, tired. I probably won't be able to put in an eight-hour day. Uh, and I may also have dizziness when I try to stand up. My muscles and bones will also probably be a little bit weaker. Uh, I'll be in a vigorous uh, rehabilitation program to try to regain the strength and, uh, and the bone integrity as soon as possible. Uh, muscle strength should come back in two or three months. Bones may take one or two years. There's all kinds of things that uh, challenges that I'm facing up here that I wouldn't uh, otherwise face in any other type of vocation uh, back home. The other thing I have a privilege of doing is, is watching the world out the window. You cannot be up here and not get a different perspective on, on the world, uh, a very international perspective. My crew are from Russia, the United States, and, and Belgium, so we discuss at dinner uh, world affairs. Um, we look out the window and we circle the Earth once every 90 minutes, so in a day I can easily cover most of the uh, Earth if I were to spend my entire day looking out the window and thinking about the, the problems that we have in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, overpopulation, uh, environmental damage inflicted by, by humans, uh, misguided ac activities, and even uh, evidence of, of poverty. So being up here gives us a different uh, global perspective that I wish uh, many people could share. Uh, coming home with this type of feeling, I hope that uh, I can exploit uh, this perspective that I have to uh, benefit Canada and the international community. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Dr. McLaughlin as well. The Ontario Science Centre has been an important part of my personal life. I've had many visits there. Goodbye, everyone.